I wanted to do something different this week. So rather than talk about FreeDOS, I wanted to show something I learned when I first started using Linux on my home computer in 1993. Now I've talked about in other forums that I used MS-DOS throughout the 1980s and into the 1990s. And when I was an undergraduate student in the early 1990s, I tried Unix for the first time in our campus computer lab, but I wanted to try Unix at home. And so that's how I discovered Linux and then I installed Linux on my home computer for the first time in 1993. Now I dual booted Linux with MS-DOS and I booted into Linux to do my Unix stuff. But in 1993, the problem was Linux didn't have a lot of apps. It was pretty much, you know, file managers and editors like, you know, GNU Emacs. Linux didn't have word processors. And what you're seeing on screen is word for DOS. DOS had tons of word processors, but Linux definitely didn't have a word processor like that. So what was I gonna do as a student if I needed to write a paper for class, well, I was going to dual boot back into MS-DOS all the time, but that was a little bit disrupted. If I wanted to experiment, how could I write a paper for class, an undergraduate paper uh, using Linux tools? And so that's when I learned what I'm about to show you. So I learned how to use NROF and TROF to write papers. And so here uh, you're seeing on the right hand side a terminal uh, that's kind of set up in sort of green screen mode. And that's what you would expect to see on terminals across campus. Uh, over here, I've got another terminal that's set up as 67 lines tall. And why do I have it in 67 lines? Well, because it's, it's 80 columns wide and 67 uh, lines long. And that's because a printed page is 80 columns wide by 66 lines tall. And so I'm doing this uh, with 67, so that way you can see uh, all 66 lines of output and my prompt at the bottom of the screen doesn't actually like uh, get rid of the first line. So we can see an entire uh, page in that uh, teletype sort of terminal. So when I needed to write papers, I started to explore using NROF. And there's a really interesting history about uh, NROF. Let me go ahead and just start a paper here in uh, NROF. Uh, so if I open up a new file, and NROF doesn't care about extensions. And so we'll just call this one uh, sample. And so I'm editing this in the VI editor, and I can just uh, write some uh, paragraphs here and I can say this is a sample uh, paragraph or sample document um, and you don't actually have to put everything on one line and, and let the screen like wrap or anything like that you can actually uh, just type uh, your document um, with uh, uh, lines however you need them uh, and uh, NROF will uh, what's called collect words and it will fill paragraphs. And so that means that it will always have uh, paragraphs that are filled all the way to the, uh, to the full width of, of a page. And if you need to start a new uh, paragraph, you can certainly just add a blank line in here and just say, this is a new uh, paragraph. Now, if I were to save that, and process that over here on my teletype terminal using NROF. Well, if I just do NROF on sample, uh, you can see that I've got an entire uh, page with my paragraphs uh, put up on there. But everything is starting on the first line of my printed page and everything is mushed up on the left-hand side of the uh, of the document. And so what I would actually do normally is I would set up a document, a new file called margins. And so I'll just say uh, page margins where I would define the uh, line length as 60 and I would set up a page offset of 10. And so this is how you do instructions in NROF. Everything starts with a period on a, on a new line and then you have uh, usually one or two characters to indicate uh, an NROF instruction. And so dot LL tells NROF, this is the line length. And basically it's the text body uh, is gonna be 60 characters wide and page offset of 10 characters. And what that means is on a, on a printed page where you have 80 columns, 
Well, if you've got 10 columns on the left that I got for my page offset, and then I've got 60 columns for my line length, well, 60 plus 10 is 70. That leaves 10 columns on the right. So basically what this does is it creates a 10 column left and uh, right margin. And so if I were to save that and then process my file using NROF on page margins and then uh, my sample document, it will actually create a left and right uh, margin. And so that was basically the, st the start of writing documents in NROF. You could also do other stuff uh, like you could, uh, if I just edit my sample file again, uh, you can create a, uh, uh, you can space down a little bit. So we'll add some uh, extra blank lines here. Uh, we'll add, let's say six blank lines. We'll do a temporary indent of five characters. Uh, and then down here, we'll do a uh, another uh, extra blank line. So without a number, it just does one line. And we'll do a temporary indent of five. And so temporary indents of five is a pretty standard way to write a document uh, for a uh, for a class. Basically, that's, that's, that's an indented paragraph where the first line is indented. So if I uh, write that uh, back, then I can process that again. And you can see that now I've added some uh, vertical space at the top of my document and I've done temporary indents on things. And you could uh, create your own macros and things like that that would do paragraphs and titles and things like that. But it was actually so much easier just to learn an existing macro package. And so that's what I did. And so I learned uh, the ME macro package. And so let me show you a simple document written in the ME macros. And so I'm going to start a new file over here uh, called paper.me. And so I would uh, uh, create a section heading. And so, oops, uh, we'll do a section heading uh, .sh, and this will be a first level section heading. If I, and section headings are going to be numbered. If I didn't want a, a numbered uh, section heading, I'd do an, a uh, and that would be an unnumbered uh, section heading. But here we'll do a section heading that's numbered a top level or a first level heading, and we'll call that uh, introduction. If I needed to have more than one word in there, I would need to uh, bracket it uh, with uh, uh, quotes. And then to start a new paragraph, I'm going to do a .pp, and then I can just write my text. And so let's say uh, uh, one uh, uh, cool thing I like uh, about the, uh, the history of Unix uh, is how Unix uh, developed into a document processing system. Uh, the short history of that uh, is the Unix team uh, needed or wanted uh, to purchase a, uh, a new computer uh, to keep working on uh, Unix or Unix. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, management uh, said, and then we'll do this in quotes, uh, no. Uh, and we'll do a new paragraph here. Around that same time, uh, the patents team uh, wanted to buy a, uh, a new computer uh, to write patent applications. But the vendor uh, hadn't finished the software. The Unix team uh, went back and uh, went to them and said, and we'll just put this as a block quote just to show you that you can do things like block quotes. And we'll do this as a block quote and said, uh, uh, hey, if, uh, if you uh, buy us a new computer, uh, we'll update the existing, uh, and we'll call it uh, the, and put that in bold, the Roth uh, typesetting system. Uh, so you can write patent applications. And then we'll end our block quote and we'll start a new paragraph. Uh, and so that's how uh, Unix updated or, or created uh, the first, and we'll do this in bold, uh, NROF program. Uh, and that was... Uh, Put this in italics the new roth 
uh, typesetter. Oh, we'll do a period after that. And uh, later, uh, they updated uh, the NROF program to become bold. Uh, TROF, and then we'll put a comma after that. I'm putting this as a second option because uh, if I made it like that, then the comma would be bold as well. But it turns out if you have an optional uh, second option here, that would be uh, put into normal type. And so that's why I'm putting a space and then a comma. And then that would become uh, TROF, uh, the, uh, and we'll put this in italics, the typesetter uh, version of ROF. Uh, and that, oops, and, um, and uh, uh, even later, and, and then, um, uh, you know, so even later, um, B is the DIT ROF, the device independent version of TROF. And so there I've got a sample document that is starting to look a little messy because of all the, the period instructions there, but it actually, uh, I find kind of easy to read once you kind of get used to it. So you can see that I've got instructions in there. It'll do uh, paragraphs and uh, block quotes and italics and bold and things like that. And so if I just save that, uh, I can now process that over here by saying NROF uh, uh, using a hyphen ME, uh, of paper.me. Now this is going to not have the page offset, but that's okay. Remember, I always would create that uh, that that page margin uh, thing. But you can see over here, I've got uh, that's what the output looked like, and so you can see I've now got a document that I could print on my dot matrix printer at home or the dot matrix printer that we had at the computer lab. And in fact, we kind of had kind of a neat deal where if you printed on the dot matrix printer, you didn't actually have to pay for it. Uh, you had to pay if you wanted to print on the laser printer. So if I needed to print a document for class, uh, I learned how to use uh, NROF and I could write that in the computer labs uh, or I could write it at home and then upload it to the computer lab and then print it from uh, the computer lab uh, when I got onto campus. And by the way, if I did NROF uh, hyphen ME and then my page margins and then my paper.me, uh, that will create my, uh, my, my one inch margin on the left and the right. Now I can even do more with this. And so if I go back and edit my file, so uh, edit uh, paper.me, uh, I can actually add, if I uh, put a blank line up here, I can add, uh, call it a, a, a title page. And I can now uh, center the, the next, let's say, uh, uh, we'll do the next five lines. And so first I'm going to do a bold uh, title of my paper. And then we'll add some extra spacing in here. We'll add... Uh, well, two lines of spacing. Actually, up here, I should probably add some spacing at the top. So we'll add some spacing and we'll do like uh, six lines of space. All right. So then after my uh, adding some space in here, now I need to have another line of output. So the CE5 is going to center the next five lines of printed output. So the blank lines don't count. And so here I'm going to put in uh, my name. And so I'll just say Jim Hall and then we'll add another blank line SP without an option that just adds an extra blank line. And then I'll uh, have the, uh, the class uh, number and then another blank line. And then uh, the, um, uh, I need to have my instructor uh, name. Remember, this is what a, a, a title page looks like for an undergraduate class. And then we'll do another uh, blank line and we'll have uh, the date. And so that should be uh, title of my paper plus the uh, my name, uh, the class name, the instructor's name, and the date uh, should be a, uh, a new uh, or it should be five uh, lines of output. And then I probably want to create a, uh, a new uh, uh, page break. And so that's a, that's a blank page instruction. And that would create a title page. Now I would also want to have, and I usually did this right up here at the top, I'd want to have a page header and footer, but not in the first page. A title page doesn't create a page header and footer. And so I can create a page header that would have stuff. And I'm going to use this uh, with a, a single quote. Uh, I could put some text, whatever I needed to on the left. So I will say left and then centered and then 
right. And I could do the same thing in the footer.fo. And I could do left. And if I didn't want to have anything in the center, I would just have a blank uh, space there in the quotes. And if I wanted to have a page number, I could just use a percent. And that would insert a page number. And then another thing I need to have in a uh, uh, in an academic paper is once I've started a new page down here, I'll need to make this uh, line spacing of two. So I'm now going to set double spacing on my document. And now if I uh, close that document and then rerun that document through NROF, you can see that now I have a double spaced uh, document. Uh, my block quote is not because that's not what you would do. You would have uh, block quotes would be uh, single spaced, uh, and um, and I've got my uh, my my title page uh, uh, is up above it up here, right? There's the title of my my paper, and uh, and my name and the class, the instructor, and the date. And on page two, of course, I've got my page header it says left, center, and right, and then uh, the page footer. I only put in the left and uh, a page number on the right hand side. And so you could create uh, wh whatever formatting you needed in a document uh, and you could make it look really nice using NROF. Now NROF would only do plain text. So this was suitable for printing on some kind of a typewriter like device. And so my dot matrix printer at home would do this just fine. Our printer in the computer lab would do this just fine. Now, if I wanted to make it look really, really nice, it turns out I could just use uh, TROF or actually on a Linux machine, you would use GROF. And you don't actually have to update your document. You can just say uh, GROF and uh, using the ME macros. But in this case, I'm going to set the output type to be PostScript. Now, by setting the output type, it's going to automatically uh, set up some page margins for me. So I don't need to have my page margins uh, file in there. And so now I'm going to say uh, paper.me. And we're going to save that as a new file called paper.ps. And now if I wanted to view that file, paper.ps and this is what it would print on my laser printer it would print out my title page uh, we'll just zoom out here and look at the entire page uh, and so it would print out the uh, the, the title page that uh, now has my title in bold and my name and the class name and the instructor and the date uh, all centered below it. If I needed to add more vertical space, that was pretty easy to do, as you saw. Uh, and then on page two, I've got my, uh, my, my page header and my page footer, and I've got the text in there. And you'll notice that now it's using uh, Times New Roman as my font. And so this is a very nice way to print a document uh, into a laser printer. And so if I wanted to pay uh, as a student for uh, the laser printer, or I wanted to run this through a, a special filter to print this on my uh, dot matrix printer at home in sort of a graphics mode, I could easily do that and make my documents look really nice. Now I didn't do this all the time for my documents, but you know, it was nice to be able to learn how to use uh, NROF and TROF to generate documents from Linux. And I have to say, preparing for this video to talk about it, it actually is really fun, again, to write documents uh, using NROF and TROF. It's just kind of fun to type it in and to see the output come up. And by the way, you can see the bold and the italics and just everything just looks so nice. Anyway, I just wanted to show you what uh, I would use, how I would use my computer at home after I installed Linux uh, when I didn't want to boot back into uh, DOS all the time to run applications. Uh, what do you think about this video? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, before I go, I want to thank everybody who supports me on Patreon. You really do make this channel happen. Uh, some of you are sponsoring me at a higher level, and I want to thank you especially here for that. Uh, don't forget to visit our website at freedos.org, join us on Facebook, follow us on Mastodon, and consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you.